So I was browsing the Steam hardware survey, like I sometimes do, and was incredibly surprised when I saw this. About one in every 200 people are still using a 9500 GT. That may not seem like a lot, but to put it into perspective, that's more than all of the people that are currently running any Radeon R7 200 series of graphics card, combined. However, I'm sure most of the people that have a 9500 GT only use it for light gaming, easy to run esports, and HD video streaming. But can it do more? Can a nearly 9 year old GPU play modern AAA titles? Well, no. Most new AAA titles require at least DirectX 11 and this card only supports DirectX 10. But I guess that begs the question, what else can it run? But before we answer that question, we should find out a little bit more about the card's stats. The card was originally released in late July of 2008 for around the $80 to $90 price point. It comes packing 32 CUDA cores with a 1400 MHz shader clock and a 550 MHz core clock. It also comes with 256, 512, or 1024 MB of GDDR3 or GDDR2 with a 128-bit memory bus. This particular card is the 512 MB GDDR3 version. With only a 50 watt TDP, this card runs easily and cool on basically any system. In fact, it runs so cool that some cards, like this one, came passively cooled. The card also supports up to DirectX 10.0 and OpenGL 3.3. As far as game testing goes, we aren't going to test any easy to run esports, we'll be focusing on a spread of game titles from indie to popular AAA. In addition, we'll be testing it on my trusty old 4x5 aspect ratio monitor, as that's probably what most people who have this card are still running, and it's what it would have used back in the day when it was new. And it has slightly more pixels than a 720p monitor, so if you want to translate the results into a 16x9 aspect ratio, you would get a slightly higher frame rate on the latter when the games were tested at the full 1280 by 1024 resolution. And finally, we'll be using our trusty Xeon test bench as well, so let's get started.
although the averages on almost all of the games were above 30, in some of the more demanding titles the minimums dropped a bit too far a bit too often, making the gameplay stutter and making a couple of the games pretty hard to play. But it did play them, so maybe a healthy overclock would get these games to a more playable frame rate. So. I overclocked the core from 550MHz to 675 and the memory from 400MHz to 460. So let's see how much that'll help improve our performance. After we overclocked it, we got a much better average on most of the games, except for The Binding of Isaac, but it was capped at 60, so it was incredibly playable nonetheless. And GTA V saw a great improvement average from 29 to 34, making it far more playable. But what made the game more playable wasn't that the average was 5 FPS higher, but the minimums didn't drop as low and they didn't drop as often, so the gameplay was far smoother and you could actually play this online. I actually did test this out online more than just the benchmark that you saw, and it's actually a pretty good experience playing it with this card. And I was also pretty impressed on how well this card handled Far Cry 3. Although Far Cry 3 is a pretty optimized game and it came out for Xbox 360, it still plays the game really quite well and I actually spent far too much time playing this game. Ugh, oh, it's fun. Anyhow, so I guess if you're one of the many people who still owns a 9500 GT, it can indeed game, as long as you don't expect too much graphically and you don't expect to play DX11 or higher titles. And for a mid-range 9-year-old card, it's not too bad. Not bad at all. So, thank you folks for watching. May your frame rates be high and your prices low. And I'll catch you folks next time.